I just can't stop spending money on this motorcycle. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to the Chopper Fit channel. My name is Brett, we make the motorcycle videos and motorcycle vlogs here on YouTube. Now, in the past, you've seen me go through seat after seat after seat for the Harley Davidson Dyna. Today, we're actually going to change our seats from this to this. Yeah, I know it doesn't look quite right on the bike, but I'm hoping that the quality and the comfort of it kind of overshadow the looks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk, get a little bit of overview of the seat itself, install the seat, and then we'll take it for a test ride. So let's go and roll the intro and we'll get into it. Roll it. All right, so today we are going to be installing our new Corbin gunfighter seat onto the Z900 RS. Now, like we said in the intro, the design of this is maybe a little bit more aggressive than what we're looking for in a naked upright or naked retro, I guess is what you would want to call that. But in all honesty though, I think, I think it might work out. So let's go ahead and kind of go over the quality of the seat first, and then we'll get into the install. So the overall seat quality is superb. A couple of things I always look for to see if it's actually a good quality seat would be, is, is your seat riveted? So if your seat has rivets on it, then that's usually a good sign of a quality seat maker. Every other seat that I've had, saddleman of the like, has used the rivets, which just makes makes me think that it's going to be a very good seat from when I get using it. Now, the problem though with rivets is if you do need to have it reshaped, you're probably gonna have to go back to Corbin in order to do so. But we're hoping that's not going to be a problem. As far as the leather, the leather is a nice kind of semi tuck and roll on the butt. And then the kind of passenger side is just a kind of like a regular old leather. Uh, you can get this customized in many different options with like the piping and, and things like that. Uh, this one just has the, the Corbin logo on it because I don't need all the extra stuff on there for an extra charge. Um, as far as the rest of the build, I mean, the build quality looks really good. You do lose with the Z900RS's Corbin seat. Uh, it comes normally with like a tool set underneath the, the seat. This one won't have it, so kind of keep that in mind. I'm not sure, I've never had to use mine for anything, but if the uh, situation arose, you might actually find yourself looking for one. Um, but other than that though, I mean, it's a nice heavy seat. It feels nice and firm compared to the stock seat. So uh, let's go ahead and get it installed, see if we come up with any sort of issues along the way and we'll go from there. All right, now for the stock seat and any other seat, you're just going to basically use your key is so I can go under here. There's a little switch and you should be able to turn and it should just pop off. Now, I've already kind of experimented with this as well. So you take it off, put it back on. Here's also that toolkit that I was mentioning earlier. So stock seat back on again, just slide it into place underneath the hook that's up there in the front and it should just pop into place like that and it's locked back in. So now, key again, pops out, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get, throw the Corbin on next. All right, so as we saw in the Corbin, we uh, don't have the tool kit, which is okay. Um, let's go ahead and see how it fits in there. So same hook in the front and this is what I noticed with this seat when I was trying to experiment with it earlier. It doesn't necessarily lock into that place as easily. You kind of have to kind of force it down a little bit. Not too bad. I, I can live with that. The part that I'm having a little bit trouble living with is the fact that now the key, when I try to put it in to take this seat off, it doesn't, it just, I'm turning it right now. It, it won't let me turn. Uh, there's something about the way the locking mechanism is working on the Corbin that's actually preventing me from getting the seat lifted off. So as you can see right here, I'm turning the key and it's just not doing anything. So what I found for 
This solution has basically been for me to put my fat butt on it, push down on that fender with the seat, and then it twists and it comes off. So that's the, uh, the solution for getting that on and off is basically weight. Weight seems to be the key to getting this one on and off. Not a big deal. Now that I found out how to do it, that's such a bad idea. So that's definitely the annoying part is the on and off, but I'm hoping once I get this seat on the motorcycle and I'm out riding, I won't have to take it off again unless you know I need access to uh, the battery or something else underneath. So, so if we compare our seats here, we will notice that the stock seat, this is a tall seat, mind you, has quite a bit of foam all the way through and the Corbin is actually a lot smaller. So one thing I did do is I compared it to this seat here and I also compared it to the low seat that you could get with the RS. Uh, I feel like the Corbin is kind of somewhere in between. So we have you know, a little bit of space here and then our tall seat's really kind of nice. Um, the tall seat's a little bit more plusher, but I have found when I was riding with it, eventually my, my tailbone and everything would start to hurt. So I'm hoping the gunfighter keeps me locked in and a little bit better. Um, but with that being said though, there's really nothing else to do except for taking this thing for a test ride. So let's go ahead, throw this seat away <laughs> and we'll go ahead and uh, get into um, the ride. I guess that's all there is left to it. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's go. So far we have talked about the build quality of the seat. We have talked about the installation issues that I have had with the seat. We have talked about the looks of the seat. And now it's time to decide, with all those things in mind, is it comfortable enough to justify, one, the price tag, and then two, all of those little minor annoyances with the seat? I will say, yes, it is worth it. <laughs> to keep it simple to start with there anyway. So the thing that I had an issue with, I guess you could say, with the stock seats, is just the overall positioning that it put me in. So on those bench seats, they weren't really a bench seat like the Triumph is. They did have a hump to them. So both the low seat and the tall seat, both did have a, a slight little bump to them. On the low seat, it would really hit the small of my back and it was very uncomfortable. It was just a very, very thin pad that was on there and just was not comfortable for long periods. The stock regular height seat was much more comfortable. However, that one as well ended up hurting about my, kind of like the tail of my butt, I guess you could say. It was very unpleasant after about 40 to 50 minutes. You could kind of raise yourself up. You could get up on the pegs and kind of push yourself back to the pavilion, which was kind of nice to kind of give you an alternate seating position to kind of give it a little rest. But it, it wasn't sustainable. Like even when you went back, it was like immediately back to that, that achy feeling. So this seat here though, the Corbin, like I said in a few videos ago, was like if the stock seat the high one and the low one had a baby, this is what it would have created. So what this does for me is it puts me right in the middle of the height. So if we were to say the stock regular seat height is like this and the other one's like this, this one's like right there in the middle. I don't know how well that translated with, <laughs> with the GoPro there, um, but that's how I would equate this seat as far as the, the seating height. And then the other thing I do like about it is it sits me back about an inch back in the seat as well. Uh, what this allows me to do is I feel like it gets that pressure off of the tailbone. Because if you look at the way the seat is styled, it looks like it just kind of comes up in cups. And so basically it's like cupping the buttocks and it kind of just has a, an effect of holding me in place. So like even if I was to like romp on it, all I do is I feel like it pushes me back in the seat, but I don't feel like I'm gonna go anywhere. I don't have to hold off for dear life anymore. 
Now, it's still not the softest of seats, though. Um, and I've had this thing for long enough for it to be broken in by now. It's still firm. Don't buy the seat thinking it's going to be some plush uh, seat, kind of like the Sundowner seats from Harley Davidson or any touring motorcycle for that matter. It's not going to be like that. And if you go into this seat with that in mind, you will be disappointed in it. What this seat actually is, is it's very firm compared to stock, but it's a firmness that because of the way it's shaped, it kind of disperses all the pressure points. So yeah, while it is maybe not as plush to initially sit on as say the stock seat is, I could go, go for probably anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes before needing a break as opposed to the, about the 40. So, I mean, if we're talking a 25 to 50% increase in ride time between breaks, I feel like that's pretty substantial. Now, one other thing I did notice is when I get tired, even on this seat, because it could happen, just happens, we all get tired. When we get tired with this one though, when I get off and say I fill it up with gas, you know, five minutes, whatever. After by that five minutes, I'm done. I'm like ready to go again. With the other one, I kind of had a prolonged like, uh, maybe we should take about 15 to 20 guys. <laughs> no. This one put me some gas in it and I am good to go again. Now, the only other thing that I noticed with this seat is because it did change the positioning i did have to change my handlebar position a little bit as well because when the bike was still down here with the stock handle or the stock handlebar position it created quite a bit of numbness in my hand like i would have to constantly just shake it out shake it out shake it out so i did have to raise the bars forward just a little bit which basically made them up a little bit higher and that has made it a more pleasant experience when it comes to riding so I like that I like that a lot now uh, the other thing though that you will notice and I'm gonna come up over the sill to make sure there's not a cop first there's not so we're in third if we rev it up to like six and above so six to 7500 there there's a vibration and I think that's just because this isn't as thick of a seat but you do get a vibration kind of on the seat itself it, it doesn't translate to the handlebars or anything it's just like right on top of the frame it feels like has like a little bit of a buzzing again it's not a big deal it goes away once you shift and get out of that little bit of RPM but I have noticed six to 7,000 RPM does provide a little bit of buzzing. But that's the, the Corbin Gunfighter seat review that I have for you. Again, I've absolutely loved the seat. It's, it's not the prettiest, I understand that, but if you can get past the looks, and the looks, again, it's, it looks better in person than it does in photos. But if you get past the looks, I think it's an overall quality seat. It might be a little expensive for the product that you're getting, but if you're looking for something more better than stock, I guess you could say, uh, there's not many choices out there except for uh, this, and I think there's the Baxter seat, which that one looked like it would push me way too far forward, so that's kind of limited on my options. Go and drop your comments below, though, as always, and I will catch you on the next dark side as this is the way. Chop for seeing you. Later, guys.